Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how to start data blogging with the programming language R in less than 20 minutes. And I'm going to assume that you have absolutely zero experience or knowledge of how to do any of this. Within the next 20 minutes, you're going to not only be analyzing professional quality, social and political data, and producing your own analysis, but you're also going to have it posted to your own blog that you can start sharing with other people. I have my computer right here. I'm going to actually show you on my screen exactly what to do step by step. This video is a supplement to a free online course that I'm offering right now, which pretty much just breaks down everything that follows in this video, but with text. And I split it up for a week long process. So you can just do a little piece of it each day for about a week. If you wanna just do it all in one go, if you have the time to do it, by all means, go for it. But for some people, it will be easiest to break it down into small pieces. That way you can kind of play around and experiment with each bit of the lesson, as well as just following the steps that I walk you through. Oh, also in this video, there are a few moments where I refer to code snippets that I supply to you. The only way to get those is in the online course emails. So you're welcome to copy it from the video but that'd be kind of tedious. So to get the code examples that I apply in this video, sign up at the link in the description below. First, we have to run a search for downloading R. Easiest way to do that is just to search CRAN R project or use the link that I give you. Go ahead and choose that first option. The page will look something like this. And you need to just select the link that corresponds to the computer and operating system that you're using. So I'm on a Mac, so I will click this middle one. And then you just wanna choose the first option, the most recent binary. Right, so that is downloading now. And as soon as that's done, all we need to do is double click it to unpack it and install. All right, so now I just go down here, open it up, and you can mostly go with all of the default options. Okay. Install. It should only take a minute. Great, the instant. So if you look in your applications folder, you should now have an application called R. We don't need to open that up quite yet. We're just gonna leave it for the moment. Now we wanna run a search for download R Studio. Should be the first option. We want the free version of R Studio. So you can just click here and again, choose the option that corresponds to your computer and operating system. For me, that's Mac OS, go ahead and download it. Now we'll go ahead and unpack that. You wanna just drag our studio into applications. And then once it's done copying, you should now have in your applications folder R and R studio. Now we're just gonna double click R studio to open that up. Hit open. You can do this later, so, or you can do it now if you want to. It's pretty much up to you. I don't feel like doing it now, so I'm just gonna click not now. And this is what you should see. Go ahead and expand that to the full length of your screen. I will briefly introduce you to these different panels you see here. Over here in the console, this is where you can type commands in the R language and have the R language execute those commands. When you create objects, which we'll talk about in a little bit, they will appear over here in the environment. And down here is just a file browser and some other 
utilities. When you make a graph, for instance, it'll pop up down in this right corner. So let's do a really simple test. Just go ahead in the console and type two plus two and hit enter. It'll print out the result, which is four. Now let's try to store that result in an object. Call it X. To do that, you type X and then make this little arrow sign using the less than symbol and a dash. And now do two plus two and hit enter. This is going to store the result in an object called X. So here you see it did not print out the result, which is four. It made this new thing that we have now in the environment. It's called X and this is what it contains, just simply the number four. So now we can do things with that object. So for instance, if you type X divided by two, what that really is saying is four divided by two. Go ahead and hit enter and it will print out the result, which is two. All right, congratulations. You can now tell people that you have some experience using the programming language R. <laughs> Not much experience, but you can tell people that you have some. It's much better to save your code in files so you can use it later. So what we're going to do is go to file and then new file and then choose R markdown. It's going to tell you that you need to install a bunch of packages. So just go ahead and click yes. And then it will ask you to input some information about your new file. So just give it a title, call it whatever you want, but I'll call mine first blog post, make yourself the author. And for our purposes, leave it set at HTML and just go ahead and click OK. And that's going to create a new space in the top left here. It's going to pre-fill some information, which we'll go over in a minute. But the first thing you need to do is save this file. So click Command S or do it from the top file menu and then find a place to save it. We'll just call this first blog post. And it's usually best to start a directory. So I will move to the desktop and then I will do a new folder and I'll call it, you know, first blog post. Click create. So this is your project directory and we will save a file called first blog post into that directory. There we go. So I'm not even going to explain what you're looking at here. I'm just going to cut to the chase and show you how to do some pretty interesting analyses right off the, the bat. First, we need to install a few packages, which are just kind of extra functionality that don't necessarily come included. And one package, we can do this in the console because you only have to install a package once. One package that we want is called tidyverse. So I give you all this code in the free course, so you can just copy and paste it. Go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see some red text, that means it's downloading. Great, and when that's done, I want you to install the package called Gapminder. Again, just copy and paste it from the course. Hit enter. And when that's done, we are good to go. So now I want you to copy and paste the longer bit of code that I gave you that will actually run the analysis. Before we do that though, I want you to delete most of this. Everything from hashtag R markdown and below, just go ahead and delete that. You can leave this top gray box here and I want you to just go up to insert and then click R. So that's a new, this is called a code chunk. All right, so this is where I want you to paste the code that I gave you. When you paste, it should look something like this. And that's everything you need for a blog post worthy data analysis. Make sure you save all the time. It's very easy. Oh, and real quick, we're going to make a slight amendment to the front matter up here. I want you to cut out this bit where it says output and paste in the amended code that I gave you. It should now look like this. The reason we're doing this is because by default, RStudio gives you one standalone HTML file as an output, but we want to break it down into its component parts. So we have a separate image file and we have the HTML code all separate. 
It gives us more flexibility when we want to post this to a blog. Now all we have to do is click knit right here and that will convert all of the information in this file into a proper analysis and output the results. And there you have it. Notice that it includes the code that goes into the analysis. So you can choose to include that when you upload your blog post or you can just remove all of the code and simply feature the nice elegant publication quality graph that we've made. And if you look at your project directory, you should now have the HTML file as an output, but you'll also have a files folder added on, which contains everything that goes into that HTML file. Most importantly for us, the images are now separate. So this is our graph right here. It's called unnamed chunk because we did not name our chunk. And it's an image file which we can upload to our blog. So now we need a blog. So if you don't already have one, for this tutorial, we're just going to use WordPress. It's totally free and reliable. So just go to wordpress.com. If you don't have a site yet, you can figure out how to start one. It's very simple. I already have one, so I'm just going to log in. So when you log into your site or when you create a new one, whichever, you should land somewhere like this. Just go ahead and click right. And then your page should look something like this. And go ahead and give your first blog post a title. You might want to call it something more interesting, depending on the finding in your data analysis. But once you've given it a title, then what we want to do is click this plus sign to add what WordPress calls a block. And Nicely, they have a option for code. So if you search code, select this one, syntax highlighter code, right? And what you wanna do now is go over to the right and tell it that you're gonna be using R code. Select R. And now you can paste into here the code that you used to produce your analysis. So just go back to R Studio. And for our purposes, for this blog post, just copy this code. Go back to WordPress, paste it, and now we want to insert our image. So here we want to go to image, select image, and now you can drag in the image that we produced in our analysis. There you have it. So now you can tell your readers more about the motivation for this analysis, what you were thinking going into it. And of course you always wanna write up a little bit about the findings to explain the graph and why people should be interested in that. But that's for you to do. This is just a bare bones example, but here we have a nice data-driven blog post with the code that went into it. So if you go to preview, this is what your blog post will look like. You see there's nice syntax highlighting and then the graph of interest, okay? So that's pretty much all there is to it. If you go ahead and click publish, you'll now have a proper data-driven blog post that you can start sharing with people. So go ahead and publish, but then you're not done yet because you have to get this in front of other people's eyeballs. And I'm assuming that you don't already have an audience. So after you publish, here's what I want you to do. Go back and then click stats, all right? And this is built-in analytics that shows you how many people are visiting your page or your site. So what I want you to do now is take the link that you have for your blog post, the first post that you published, and I want you to go to reddit.com and you can find whatever community is most relevant to the data analysis that you're doing. For this example, I'll just give you the example of r slash data viz. These are people interested in data visualization. So if you just go to the subreddit for whatever community is most likely to be interested in your data analysis, the best way to get early traffic is to make a post. If 
you go to create post, the best way to do this usually is to use the post option. All right, these ones, image and video and link, they're a little quicker and easier. So people are more likely to get mad at you for spamming. But if you do a post, then you can write a thoughtful description and explanation of what you're posting to help people understand why they should be genuinely interested in it. So for our example, it might just be something like the changing relationship between longevity and wealth around the world or something like that, something interesting. And then here's the, the real important thing. You can't just paste the link into the description and hope people will look at it because then they'll know you're just promoting your blog. You need to write a short paragraph like, I was exploring some data from Gapminder and I found a surprising phenomenon. The graph is quite surprising to me, so I thought some of you might also be interested to see this data visualization. And maybe a few more sentences. Obviously, this is not a great example because I'm just giving you an example. I'm just walking you through the logic and how to do it. But this is the kind of thing that you want to do. And then you can include your link. So be like, you know, datablog.wordpress.com slash first blog post or whatever the case might be. And yeah, the real trick is to not be spammy about it. You want to select a link right there and give it the URL. And as long as you're providing value and you're genuinely trying to teach someone something, then generally people respond favorably to this. And you go ahead and click post. And then what you want to do is go back to your WordPress stats page. And sometime in the next 24 hours, you are going to see hits here. You're going to see visitors and it's going to be rewarding. You really need to give yourself that kind of psychological reinforcement, that positive reinforcement to make you feel like you're making progress and that at least someone somewhere is paying attention to it. You might want to wait 24 hours or so. It might take some time, but it's really gratifying to see the results, to see that at least some people are reading it. And if you post to Reddit, you're almost guaranteed to get at least one or two people checking out your content. And it might not be that much, but on your second post, your goal can be to just get a few more than you got the first time around. And as long as you can get that kind of growth moving, then that's all you need to be off to the races. And it's more than enough psychologically to motivate you to keep going. So there you go, you're all done. You now have a data blog and you know the bare basics of doing data analysis in R. And now it's just a matter of getting better at it, being consistent, making more analyses and posting regularly and then sharing your posts to relevant communities. Obviously, we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more I could teach you about how to optimize this process and do it in a much more serious and long-term way. But I'm going to save all of that for a future course, a longer and higher value course that I'm working on. I'll keep you posted about that, but this should be enough to get you started. So I hope you enjoyed this and stay in touch if you'd like to learn more about the next bigger and fuller course that I'll be unrolling soon. All right, see you later, folks.